It's week 15 of the National Football League. And coming up, we'll see Stefan Diggs. He's one of the league's best, currently third in the NFL in receiving yards. It's the Bills and the Dolphins coming up next. Winner is just around the corner as you get a look at Heimann. And we are underway in Buffalo. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Here we see the Bills offense take the field here at quarterback Josh Allen. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They're sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. And meanwhile, Allen's throw here taken in by Knox. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Four catches, 55 yards, and a touchdown. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. And they'll stop him after a gain of a couple to the 33. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. An early test, two plays in. This is third and two. To the air, Allen. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Here's Hill on the return. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. And here comes the Miami offense now, and it's the Southpaw in his third season at the wheel for the Finns. Quarterback to a tongue of Iloa. And he's had such a sensational season to this point, leading the NFL in passing yards. He's been helped out a lot by an outstanding set of receivers, and he's quick to give them credit. But I think even they would tell you that he's the guy that makes this offense go. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 37. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Steps away. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 23 yards on the play. Here's Tongue of Iloa on first and 10. This one complete to Jalen Waddell. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. They'll swing this complete out to Hill. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. First catch so far for the man who led the NFL coming into the weekend. He's got a first down. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. Everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. That one complete to Hill. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. Hey, Ready, go. 
They'll run it. This is James Robinson. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. The kick by Maher is good, and the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. After the made field goal, Maher back out there to kick it away. From the 10. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like us <laughs> calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Partner, we had their game last week where they had six sacks, so a little bit more momentum here again in the first quarter. And last week it appeared that they were coming out of sprinter's blocks, chasing the quarterback. So how do they continue that? How do they keep making it happen? Different looks, different disguises, different angles that they chase it. They were so disruptive last week. We'll see what the trend is here as we go forward. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. They get 13, but it's not nearly enough. And it'll be fourth down. They had quite a hole to dig out of there on third and long. Not able to get the first, but a pretty good size run. A really good run. But how much confidence do you have in your next play call that you can sell to the head coach? Let's go get it on fourth down. Do you really have a play you believe in? Or are you just hopeful? And you've got to sell it to the big man before it gets called. 21 yards, well done on the return. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And he'll be brought down at the 27. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Here's second and a yard. Here's Beckham now. It's a jet sweep. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Looking to pass to him. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I thought 
that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are out in the field and they're only thinking one thing. Get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. James Robinson with his ninth rushing touchdown on the year as his guys are able to extend their lead. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a three yard scoring run. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. From the 10. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. And here come the Bills. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. start this drive out on the ground and give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run got six, now second and four. Now Allen. This ball complete to the tight end, Sweeney. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Yeah, things are pretty stacked up here in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine, Allen. He finds his man complete. It's McKenzie. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. It'll go as a gain of four. And they're going to face a third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Throwing now is Allen. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. A give up the middle to Singletary. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. After watching that play result, it took me back to what we sat with the offensive coordinator. And we asked him, so how you plan to move the ball against his defense? He didn't really tip his hand, did he? No, he didn't. I think it's because he really didn't have an answer. He wasn't quite sure how he was going to get it done. And that play showed us exactly. Oh, Allen cannot get away. And down he goes. Bradley Chubb make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Now the punter, Sam Martin, called on to kick it away here. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Miami set to take over. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. And he'll wind up losing. 
losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Here we go. They'll stay on the ground with Moster. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practicing game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Got a man, it's Waddle complete. And he is gonna have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense uh, probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play, let's get off the field, let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they get hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. The numbers for him from a week ago. 18 carries, 87 yards, and a touchdown. But well, we know they've clinched a the playoff spot, but there's plenty of football left to play. And I'm a proponent of continuing to do what you've done throughout the season, especially with teams that are heavy run teams. Because if you throttle back too early, you lose the rhythm of the run game, not just with the runner, but with the offensive line as well. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. On right, first and ten, it's Robinson. That's the linebacker, Matt Milano, getting up and stopping him for a loss. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. On right, second down, Moster pushing forward for three up to the 48. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and all the plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. That's Waddle. He's got the catch on the out route. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter. Here we go. They've got it with a second and three forthcoming. Now Tua. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Ready? On third down, Robinson. That one good for 13 and a Dolphin first down. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called, they are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive.
Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. Oh, and they sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay of game. Awesome. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. With no run. It's going to be hot routes if they sense a blitz or pressure on the quarterback. They've got to be prepared to break routes off early and get the football. In this case, uh, never even had a chance. They popped the ball free in the backfield. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely because, remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And the next-gen stat's going to show just how much time he had to make a decision, and it's not much. Three seconds, the final clocking. The Bills on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third down and 12. Allen. Dancing to his left. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Watch out for Hill on the return. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. The offense running out, and we shine the spotlight on the undrafted revelation, James Robinson. A 1,000-yard campaign in his sights, Charles, but needs a little bit of a kick here down the stretch to reach it. And sometimes at this stage of the season, you're looking for that extra goal, right? That extra motivation to accomplish what you want, not just as a team, but as individuals. He's got to stretch a little bit to get there. That might be what they're talking about during the practice sessions, in their meetings. Hey, we can still get this done. Let's go ahead and feed him the ball. And the offensive line, I'm sure they're well aware of where he stands as well. They are, and I think for them, it would be an even better accomplishment to get there now because it seems like a little bit of a reach. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Tyreek Hill's got another one. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Here we go. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing a shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Robinson gets the toss on the right side. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. 
two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, here comes Mostert. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Partner, when you're not able to run the ball successfully, it really messes everything up for an offense because no longer are you setting the tone and dictating the game. If you do want to throw the ball, play action's kind of gone out the window because they don't respect the run. And last but not least, you don't get to dictate it all when you want to throw the football, and that really hurts you as an offense. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. The Dolphins can't convert on fourth down, and the Bills are going to get the football back. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of Locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Right back to Singletary on second down. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hines. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. They'll wind up losing three here on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Now Hill to return it. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. Miami's offense set and ready to go. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the Let's offense go. had didn't come back to bite them after the other side. Their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us. No, not just pure skill. We rose to the challenge, and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again. Now Mostert off the read option. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Two are going to throw. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And the Bills are going to take over here up near the 40. Coming up with a takeaway, and maybe that's something that can bring a little life to that sideline. Well, I don't want to say that they've been sleepwalking through this first half because that's simply not true, but you're right. We haven't seen a lot of fire from these guys, really, on either side of the ball. So maybe that's the catalyst that they needed to get them back into this game. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. That'll give them eight that time, and it'll be second in a couple. On the handoff, running left, Singletary. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. 
And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. On first down, they stick with Singletary. And he's got it to about the 40. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he'll here lose yardage here, back at the 41. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater. He just made a great play there. Steps away to his left. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. As soon as I saw him break contain and get outside, my first thought and my eyes gravitated downfield because nowadays, most of these quarterbacks, when they do that, they want the big play downfield. They don't want to throw it short. In this case, he took the shot. It fell incomplete. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. And they'll send the tight end in motion left. From just shy of midfield, Tua. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I see the surprise in the face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. This offense so far on third down, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and six, and this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. On the double. Right, right. They'll try it now with Mostert. Pushes past him. And some space here. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Here we go. The here fourth we go. down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Throwing now is Chugabailoa. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage. And hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. To throw again on second down. Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. They got a completion there. That's clearly an example. One side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very <laughs> Hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on the passing play. Tua now on first down. Yeah, he's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Jalen Waddle, his 11th touchdown of the year. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And that makes our score 17-0.
So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was finished off by a Jalen Waddle touchdown. Hines opting not to risk it, and this will come out to the 25. The Bills ready to take over. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. Want to. No, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you now just you called can go. I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them the first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Second and 10, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And yeah, I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. You should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Again, they'll throw with Allen. He'll air this one out deep for Davis. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Uh, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And they will take over first and 10. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. So big pickup that time, and Charles, defending AFC Player of the Week, maybe bucking towards another award this week. Yeah, and they say they don't really care about the individual awards. You and I both know they do. it means a lot to them. It means respect around the league. And if he's able to show those kind of hands all game long, he can win a second one. Two is throw here, take it in by Gesicki. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Here's a throw out wide to Anderson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back in the 46. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And third and eight now. Here's Tua. He is going to find Hill here. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here we go. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. And his throw here is incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. To throw on second and 10. Tua, this will be caught. It's Waddle. 
And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 14. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Right back to Jalen Waddle for another catch. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. Tua, the final shot before half. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. That's a really nice job there by the coverage, understanding that they're in a high-stakes situation. If he doesn't make a play on that ball, there's an excellent chance it ends up either as a touchdown or as a nice gain downfield. Marr able to put this one through, and that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. Good games all over the screen there, one being at MetLife Stadium, a big one for the Jets as they get set to do battle with the Detroit Lions. Then later, they'll let the sun die down a bit in Tampa. A late start here in Florida, where it'll be the Buccaneers taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Then on Sunday night, this one will be very interesting. The Patriots head west to take on their former offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, and the Las Vegas Raiders. With that, let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Miami. And our statisticians got through a couple of pencils already. This offense is on pace for potentially 500 yards in passing. That's pretty incredible. Meanwhile, for the Bills, they were on the other end of the spectrum in terms of passing efficiency. That's going to need to improve in the second half to come. Final adjustments being made for the second half. So with that, we get you back up to Orchard Park and rejoin Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Dolphins getting set to go back to work here in quarter number three. And, Charles, they've got the lead. I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one, but what do you think the talking points were in the locker room? Well, if there were three talking points at the half, partner, all of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball. Otherwise, this lead could be even bigger. Now, I don't think that they overly harped on it, but I think they told them, guys, if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting, you've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit. 